The first thing we're going to do for working on this dimensioning worksheet packet is we're going to locate the actual file. Right here it says download and print the dimensioning worksheet packet. I'm going to left click one time and go ahead and open that and that is going to open it in Autodesk Design Review. Okay, now I only see page one by default. If we come up here towards the top right, we can see it says page one of four. I can go to the next page and the next one and the fourth page and I get all of the different pages that I have here uh, for this particular packet. Now what we need to do is we need to print this out. So I'm going to come up to the application menu in the top left, left click one time, and I'm going to come down to my print option and select print. Now the settings that I'm going to take a look at, number one is the printer that I'm going to print it to. I'm also going to look at the print range. I want to print all of the pages, not just that first page. So I selected all, and I'm going to go ahead and leave everything else the same. It says that my zoom is 100%, so this should be in full scale when it prints out. And go ahead and click OK. So if we take a look at the first problem, you'll see in brackets we have a number four. That means that there are four dimensions that need to go on this object so that we can fully dimension it and be able to duplicate this object or have maybe a machinist be able to duplicate it in a manufacturing setting. We need those four dimensions to be able to draw the entire thing. I always like to start with the overall dimensions of the object. So I'm going to be putting some extension lines and I have my little gap there between my object and my extension lines. I'm going to be placing a dimension line the length and leave a little gap for our dimension and those dimension lines need to have nice small arrowheads on them. If I measure my actual length I get four inches so I'm going to put 4.00 because we want that to be in decimal inches. I'm going to follow the same procedures for my overall width of my object. Now it is okay for extension lines to cross. We don't want to have dimension lines crossing. So let's go ahead and put some dimension lines in. Let's measure the bottom here, which is two and a half inches. 2.50. The next thing I want to do is put my additional two measurements in because there are four of them. And if I were to draw this on the computer, I know my overall height and width, so I could draw this entire box. I just need to add some dimensions for this little cutout of the box. Now, I made a little bit of a mess up here where I put my overall dimensions a little bit too close to my object. So I'm going to have to kind of squeeze those in here and it might not look the best. And this is part of the process of learning how to make good dimensions that are clear and aesthetically pleasing. So this top one will be a little bit easier to do. So I'm going to add a second extension line in and let's stick some arrowheads on that first one there. And let's do a dimension line going here. We'll measure this which is one and a half inches. 1.50 inches. And we're going to do the same thing down here. Now like I said I didn't leave myself enough room. So that's something I'm going to want to keep in mind when I do the next problem. 
to maybe leave myself just a little bit extra room. Let's measure this here, which is two and a half inches, 2.50. Those four dimensions are all that we need to draw this entire part on AutoCAD or if we had those four dimensions and we sent this to a machinist, they would be able to machine this part out because that's all they need to be able to figure out all of the different parts of it. As you progress through all of the different drawings, keep in mind the number of dimensions that should go on each part. This particular one for number two has five dimensions. If we move forward to another page, this one has 10 dimensions, and this one has nine dimensions, so keep that in mind. Additionally, you wanna make sure that you reference the rules for dimensioning PowerPoint or a quick reference worksheet that is included in the links of this particular unit and make sure that you're following all the rules properly. Once you get this completely dimensioned, then you can take a look at the answer key, which is again in this unit, and see how close you were, and see how accurate you were, and maybe see if there were some areas that you didn't quite understand.